So I'll show you how to make money selling these. It's a very common item, but something that if you know just a little bit of the insider info on, you can make a pretty good penny selling them. Hey, it's Don. Today I'm going to show you how to make some money selling a pretty common item. Something I get by the hundreds of constantly. We'll show you some close-ups here. Now, this is something that you can honestly make some decent money at just by knowing a little bit more than everybody else does. I'm going to show you just part of the things that can make you a lot of money from a very common item right now. So today we're talking about uniform buttons. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I don't run into them or they're not worth a lot of money. Well, that's really not the case. I don't think there's an antique mall or a collector's fair or flea market that I go to that doesn't at least have some World War I, World War II fairly common looking buttons. Now, I separate them by size and era. So these are like World War I-ish uh, some of these probably will date a little later than that, right up to World War II. These are great coat buttons, very large sized buttons. What most people do is they'll list them in, you know, like a lot of a dozen of them and sell them that way. They don't think there's going to be much value in them, but there are some. I'll show you some in just a few minutes here that you can actually get some decent money out of that look identical to this other than some of the writing on the back. The right category would be original U.S. military items and their collectibles for World War I or World War II. Many people don't know the age, and that's how they miss out. They put them in the wrong section. They don't title them correctly. You'll see it time and time again. You may see some of these that have sold for decent money, while other ones sold in lots and didn't even sell for that much money. Again, it all comes down to where you list them and the keyword itself. Again, these are common. I don't list these individually unless there's something special about them. These are World War II buttons right here. These would be commonly used on coats and tunics and things like that. Again, there are some of these that are worth a lot of money where an individual button like this could go for a couple hundred bucks. Size-wise usually dictates the value as well. Here's a couple hundred cuff-sized, small-sized ones. They might have been used on a hat or something else like that. But these are all various ones from World War II through World War I. Same basic principle. They are not worth listing on their own unless you have a certain version of the buttons. Now, here's a whole bunch of World War I buttons. You'll see them with the black color coating on them, or they'll look copper. They'll be like a copperish color, like an old water pipe or something like that. These are typical, again, of World War I. For the most part, these would be listed as a lot material as well because they're not worth but a couple bucks a piece when sold that way. Again, with the correct title and the right maker, the right type of this button here, some of them you could get 100, 200 bucks for. Some of these would be made for a tunic, some for a shirt itself, some maybe a vest button, a coat button, a great coat button, a raincoat, a trench coat. So there's many different sizes. There's around seven or so various sizes of most of the U.S. military buttons like these, these standardized great seal buttons like this. So let's show you some variations to look for, some types of military buttons that will get you some better money than these average ones that you have to sell in a lot. Now, these are from raincoats. These would have dated to World War II. These usually get us about double what the metal buttons that I just showed you, the gold tone buttons because these aren't as common. Now, these plastic ones are fairly scarce when compared to the big brass ones that I showed you. It's the same size, the same emblem, the same everything else. These gold tone buttons here, for every hundred of these that I run into, I may be lucky to run into one or two of these. So these are far less common than the brass buttons that you'll run into. So I do get, as I said, twice as much almost for these as I would for the brass ones. You've got to list them in the World War II section, original, authentic, uniform section, put scarce. Even if I sell them as a set a lot, 
I can put together several lots with how many we've gathered up, and then I can sell them that way for double what I would get for the standard brass ones. You'll be lucky to get 15 or 20 bucks for a uniform worth of these, but I can get almost double that with these style here. Now for the cuff buttons like these here, there are some special ones that I look for as well. Now let's show you a few better ones to look for. Again, I separate them all out and keep like to like in bags here so I can list them very easily. Now what you see here are a little different. They have screws on the back. There's little mounting pieces where these could actually be stitched down or, or uh, mounted to something as well. These would belong on an epaulette or a hat or something like that. For two of these buttons here, I can easily get 10 bucks versus two of these, I'll be lucky to get 50 cents or a dollar. So it's two or three times the value for any of these with the screw backs on them. They are for something special. They're far less common than any of the other versions, again, of the brass standardized gilt button like you see here. If it has a standard shank, they were made by the millions. These are far less common and it'll get you two or three times the amount of money. The same image, same design, same everything else. Let's show you what these do. You just unscrew it. So you can take the button off, and this is how you would mount it to a uniform, or you would mount the strap to the hat, a visor cap, or something along that line. Now here's a handful from World War I all the way up to around World War II here. Now these all aren't the same. This is a very common one. I've got a whole bag of these style here. The back marks are all different. The back marks, what's written on the back, that's the maker's net mark, the maker's manufacturing mark. But with these here, these were made during World War I, and they're nicely marked, as you can see, with a Paris back mark. Very easily dated. Not many of these style would have been made overseas to begin with. Most of the soldiers that were sent over there had their uniforms already. They wouldn't have been need to make any over there unless you were an officer or someone who had money to have a custom-tailored uniform. There's six of them here. I could clean these all up and it would be a nice full set for a full great coat or something along that line. These here, I get 10 to 15 bucks a piece. Again, the common ones like this one here that just look like any other ones, I get far less. This is like a dollar at best versus 10 to 15 for these, all because they say Paris on the back. They have to have a good looking back mark. It has to be original ones. The ones that have wording on the back, again, that's the back mark on the back of them, will usually get you far more money. British buttons you'll find too, but they're not worth as much as the Paris ones because the Paris ones are far fewer. Now here's something else to look for. Now these may look very similar here. They've got the same design. They're basically from the same era, World War I through uh, World War II at the very latest. But this one here is a little bit different. This is a brass one. This one has metal on the back, but the face of this is actually oil cloth. Tarred cloth is what this one is made out of. So if you look at it very closely, and let's see if we can't get it up there a little bit better for you. If you look at it very closely, you should be able to see the pattern of canvas on this one here. They come in both versions. This is a World War I version right here, this dark colored one here. Very similar to a standard World War I button. The backs are tin with a coating on them. This one's been gilted. Sometimes the backs are made out of wood as well. Now, why would they have done that? That's the biggest question and why most people miss the value in these or don't think anything of it. These were done at the end of the war, towards the end. All the brass that we could get together was used to make ammunition. These would date from World War I-ish. Now, some of these may have been made during World War II as well, but most of these, like this you know, black-coated one here, would be World War I. These are far scarcer. For every one of these that I find, I probably find 400 or so of these type here. So if you can pull these out, you'll get better money. If you, again, list them in the right section, you'll get far better money as well. And as I said, the right section on these would be World War I under the collectibles, military, World War I, original, uniform buttons is where I list these at. I can easily get 10 to 14 bucks a piece, 10, 15 bucks a piece on these. Here's another one, different size, same button, same thing. It's made out of oil cloth or the canvas that's been tarred and coated and painted. 
And as I said, they're worth more money than the other ones. I usually put scarce in the title because these are truly scarce when it comes to any of the other buttons you'll run into. Now something else that I look for. Now what is this one here? This one's made out of wood. And it is an official one. It's got everything you'd want to find in it. It's been worn down a little bit. It's a used button. They were trying anything they could. This is impressed wood. So they took a heat mold and they just impressed it into there and compacted it as tight as they could. This is extremely scarce as well. You'll have to look through four or 500 buttons probably to find one of these. But again, if you're out there in the wild enough, you're going to be able to run into some of these. These are not super scarce, super uncommon items. They are something that do turn up quite often. Now, something else to look for are other substances that they made the buttons out of. Let's see, one of these is a metal one in here. It's kind of hard to tell, honestly. There's a metal version of it right there. It looks just like these two here, but these two are made out of different material. One's Ivorine right here. Let's zoom in so you can see it. They're usually marked Ivorine. You can see it up at the top. This would date from World War I through probably about World War II. They are far scarcer, again, than the standard brass ones. There's many different colors, many different varieties. Some of these are made out of actually a nut like this one here. Some of them are made out of Bakelite. There's probably about 15 different materials that these buttons can be found being made out of. You can see some of the various colors of the buttons. Again, they're all some sort of either Bakelite or something along that line. Here's another wood one. So wood ones do show up in several different colors as well. Sometimes they will be black also. There's variants, there's various versions and colors. Someone who has a uniform with these, they need one that matches. So with these sorts, I always list them separately because usually I can get eight to 10 bucks a piece for these right here. Again, they come in various sizes, colors, and shapes. There are white ones even of these. I've seen a few red ones and even blue ones. The eagle on the front is basically the same. Some have nice maker's marks, back marks on the back as well. These sorts of buttons here will sell for far more. Again, eight to 10 times what I'll get out of the common everyday button out there. Now, there are a couple other versions of these buttons that will get you far more money. There is a compass in some buttons from World War I and World War II, and there is also a locket where you can actually store a photo in some buttons also. So there are some secret buttons out there that could get you a couple hundred bucks that look just like the brass buttons that I showed you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if we post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Robots of all. Stacks leader one inside, kill sold separately. Think you're big enough for the king of the road? Try me. Mighty robots, mighty vehicles, robots. Too big, Stacks. Not so fast, Psycho. Thanks, good buddy. Super Gobots. Stacks leader one inside, kill each sold separately.